welcome to tonight's Torah portion. Before I get started, I'm going to say a blessing. Blessed art thou, Adonai Elohimi, King of the Universe, who chose us, who has sanctified us with his commandments and commanded us to grow ourselves with the words of Torah. Please, Adonai Elohim, you the words of your Torah in our mouths and the mouths of all your people Israel. May we and our offspring, the offspring of your people, the house of Israel. May we all together know your name and study Torah for the sake of fulfilling your desire. Blessed are you, Adonai, who teaches Torah to his people Israel. Blessed are you, Adonai Elohim, King of the Universe, who chose us from all the nations and gave us the Torah. Blessed are you, Adonai, giver of the Torah. May Adonai bless you and keep watch over you. May Adonai make his presence and that you may be kind to you. May Adonai bestow favor on you and grant you peace. Today's read is Exodus 35 1 through 38 20. Moses assembled. All the congregation of the people of Israel and said to them, These are the things that Yahweh has commanded you to do. Six days work shall be done, but on the seventh day you shall have a Sabbath of solemn rest. Holy to Yahweh. Whoever does any work on, us, on it shall be put to death. You shall kindle no fire in all your dwelling places on the Sabbath day. Moses said to all the congregation of the people of Israel, This is a thing that Yahweh has Commanded, take from among you a contribution to Yahweh. Whoever is of a generous heart, let him bring Yahweh's contribution, gold, silver, and bronze, blue, purple, and scarlet yarns, and of fine twine linen, goat hair, goat's hair, tanned ram skins, and goat skins, acacia wood, oil for the light, spices for the anointing oil, and for the fragrance incense, and onyx stones and stones for setting. For the ephod and for the breast piece. Let every skillful craftsman among you come and make all that Yahweh has commanded the tabernacle, its tent and its covering, its hook and its frames, its bars, its pillars and its bases, the ark with its poles, the mercy seat, and the veil of the screen, the table with its poles and all its utensils. And the bread in the presence, the lampstand for the light, and its utensils, and its lamps, and for the oil for the light, and the altar, and the incense with its poles, and the anointing oil, and the fragrance, the fragrant incense, and the screen for the door poles, and all its utensils, the basin, oh, sorry, at the door of the tabernacle, the altar of burnt offering with its grating of bronze, its poles, and its utensils, the basin and its stand, the hanging of the court, its pillars, and its bases, and the screen for the gate of the court, the pegs of the tabernacle, and the pegs of the court in their cords, the finely worked garments for ministering in the holy place, the holy garments for Aaron the priest, and the garments for his sons, for their service as priests. Then all the congregation of the people of Israel departed from the presence of Moses, and they came. Everyone whose heart stirred him, and in any everyone whose spirit moved him, and brought Yahweh's contribution to be used for the tent of meeting, and for all its service, and for the holy garments. So they came, both men and women. All who were of a willing heart brought brooches, and earrings, and signet rings, and armlets, all sorts of gold objects. Every man dedicating an offering of gold to Yahweh, and every one who possessed blue or purple or scarlet yarns of fine linen or goat's hair or tanned ram skins or goat skins brought them. Everyone who could make a contribution of silver or bronze brought it as Yahweh's contribution. And everyone who possessed acacia wood of any use in the work brought it. And every skillful, skillful woman spun with her hands, and they all brought what they had spun in blue and purple and scarlet yarns and fine twine linen. All the women whose hearts stirred them to use their skills spun the goat's hair, and the leaders brought onyx stones and stones to be set for the ephod and for the breastpiece and the spices and the oil for the light and for the anointing oil, and for the fragrant incense, all the men and women, the people of Israel, whose heart moved them to bring anything for the work that Yahuwah had commanded by Moses to be done, brought it as a freewill offering to Yahuwah. Then Moses said to the people of Israel, See, Yahuwah is called by name 
Bezalel, the son of Uri, the son of Hur, from the tribe of Judah. And he has filled him with the spirit of Elohim, with skill, and with intelligence, with knowledge, and with all craftsmanship, to devise artistic designs, to work in gold and silver and bronze, and cutting stones for setting, and in carving wood for work in every skilled craft. And he has inspired him to teach both him and Aholiab, the son of Ahisamach, from the tribe of Dan. He has filled them with skill to do every sort of work done by an engraver, or by a designer, or by an embroiderer in blue and purple and scarlet yarns and fine twine linen, or by a weaver, by any sort of workman or skilled designer. Bezalel and Aholiab, and every craftsman to whom Yahweh put skill and intelligence to know how to do any work in the construction of the sanctuary, shall work in accordance with all that Yahweh has commanded. And Moses called Baziel and Aholiab, and every craftsman in whose mind Yahweh had put skill, everyone whose heart stirred him up to come to do the work. And they received from Moses all the contribution that the people of Israel had brought for doing the work on the sanctuary. Still, They still kept bringing him free will offerings every morning, so that all the craftsmen who were doing every sort of task on the sanctuary came, each from the task that he was doing. And said to Moses, The people bring much more than enough for doing the work that Yahweh has commanded us to do. So Moses gave command, and word was proclaimed throughout the camp, Let no man or woman do anything more for the contribution for the sanctuary. So the people were restrained from bringing, for the material that they had was sufficient to do all the work and more. And all the craftsmen among the people, sorry, and all the craftsmen among the workmen made the tabernacle with tin curtains. They were made of fine twine linen, blue and purple, and scarlet yarns, with cherubim, skillfully worked. The length of each curtain was twenty-eight cubits, and the breadth of each curtain four cubits. All the curtains were the same size. He coupled five curtains to one another, and the other five curtains he coupled to one another. And he made loops of blue on the edge of the outermost curtain of the first set. Likewise, he made them on the edge of the outermost curtain of the second set. He made 50 loops on the one curtain, and he made 50 loops on the edge of the curtain that was in the second set. The loops were opposite <coughs> one another. And he made 50 clasps of gold, and coupled the curtains one to the other with clasps, so that the tabernacle was a single hole. He also made curtains of goat's hair for a tent over the tabernacle. And he made eleven curtains. The length of each curtain was thirty cubits, and the breadth of each curtain four cubits. The eleven curtains were the same size. He coupled five curtains by themselves, and six curtains by themselves. And he made fifty loops on the edge of the outermost curtain of the one set, and fifty loops on the edge of the, out of the other connecting curtain. And he made fifty clasps of bronze to couple the tent together, that it might be a single hole. And he made for the tent a covering of ten ram skins and goat skins. Then he made the upright frames for the tabernacle of acacia wood. Ten cubits was the length of a frame, and a cubit and a half the breadth of each frame. Each frame had ten, t sorry, had two tenons for fitting together. He did this for all the frames of the tabernacle. The frames of the tabernacle he made thus. Twenty frames for the south side, and he made forty bases of silver under the twenty frames, two bases under one frame for its two tenons, and two bases under the next frame for its two tenons. And for the second side of the tabernacle on the north side, he made twenty frames, and there forty bases of silver, the two bases under one frame, and two bases under the next frame. For the rear of the tabernacle westward, he made six frames. He made two frames for the corners of the tabernacle in the rear, and they were separate beneath, but joined at the top. At the first ring, he made two of them this way for the two corners. There were eight frames with their bases of silver, sixteen bases under every frame. Two bases. He made bars of acacia wood, five for the frames of the one side of the tabernacle, five bars for the frames of the other side of the tabernacle, and five bars for the frames of the tabernacle at the rear westward, and he made the middle bar to run from the end to end halfway up the frames, and he overlaid the frames with gold, and made their rings of gold for holders for the bar, and overlaid the bars with gold. He made the veil of blue 
and purple and scarlet yarns and fine twine linen, with cherubim skillfully worked into it, he made it. And for it he made four pillars of acacia and overlaid them with gold. Their hooks were of gold, and he cast cast for them four bases of silver, and he made a screen for the entrance of the tent, and of blue and purple and scarlet yarns, and fine twine linen, embroidered with needlework, and its five pillars with their hooks, and overlaid their capitals, and their fillets were of gold, but their five bases were of bronze. Bezalel made the ark of acacia wood, two cubits and a half was its length, and a cubit and a half its breadth, and a cubit and a half its height. And he overlaid it with pure gold, inside and outside, and made a molding of gold around it. And he cast for it four rings of gold in its, for its four feet, two rings on its one side and two rings on its other side. And he made poles of acacia wood and overlaid them with gold. He put the poles into the rings on the side of the ark to carry the ark. And he made a mercy seat of pure gold. Two cubits and a half was its length, and a cubit and a half its breadth, and he made two cherubim of gold, and he made them of hammered work on the two ends of the mercy seat, one cherubim on the one end, and one cherubim on the other end. In one piece with the mercy seat, he made the cherubim on its two ends. The cherubim spread out their wings above, overshadowing the mercy seat with their wings, with their faces one to another toward the mercy seats, with their faces, or the faces of the cherubim. He also made the table of acacia wood. Two cubits was its length, and a cubit its breadth, and a cubit and a half its height. And he overlaid it with pure gold and made a molding of gold around it. He made a rim around it, a handbreadth wide, and made a molding of gold around the rim. And he cast its four rings of gold and fastened the rings to the four corners of its four legs. Close to the frame were the rings. As holders for the poles to carry the table, he made the poles of acacia wood to carry the table and overlaid them with gold, and he made the vessels of pure gold that were to be on the table, its plates and dishes, for instance, and its bowls and flagons with which to pour drink offerings. He also made the lampstand of pure gold. He made the lampstand of hammered work, its base, its stem, its cups, its calyxes, and its flowers were of one piece with it, and there were six branches going out of its sides, three branches of the lampstand out of one side of it, and three branches of the lampstand out of the other side of it. Three cups made the almond blossom, each with a calyx and a flower on one branch. Three cups made like almond blossoms, each with a calyx and a flower on the other branch. So for the six branches coming out of the lampstand, and on the lampstand itself were four cups made like almond blossoms, with their calyxes and flowers, and the calyx of one piece with it under each pair of the six branches going out of it. Their calyxes and their branches were of one piece with it. The whole of it was a single piece of hammered work of pure gold. And he made it seven lamps and its tongs and its trays of pure gold. And he made it and all its utensils out of a talent of pure gold. He made the altar of incense of acacia wood. Its length was a cubit and its breadth was a cubit and it, it was square. And two cubits was its height, its horns were of one piece with it. He overlaid it with pure gold, its top and around its sides and its horns, and he made a molding of gold around it. He made two rings of gold on it, under its moldings, on opposite sides of it, as holders for the poles to which to carry it. And he made the poles of acacia wood and overlaid them with gold. He made the holy anointing oil also, the pure fragrance incense, blended as by the perfumer. He made the altar of burnt offerings of acacia wood. Five cubits was its length, and five cubits its breadth. It was square, and three cubits was its height. He made horns for it on its four corners. Its horns were of one piece with it, and he overlaid it with bronze. He made all the utensils of the altar, the pots, the shovels, the basins, the forks, and the fire pans. He made all its utensils of bronze, and he made for an altar a grating, a network of bronze, under its ledge, extending halfway down. He cast four rings on the four corners of the bronze grating as holders for the poles. He made the poles of acacia wood and overlaid them with bronze. He put the poles through the rings on the sides of the altar to carry it with them. He made it hollow with boards. He made the basins of bronze and its stand of bronze for, 
from the mirrors of the ministering women who ministered in the entrance of the tent of meeting. <coughs> Excuse me. Come on, stop it. And he made the court. For the south side, the hangings of the court were fine twine linen, a hundred cubits. There are twenty pillars, and their twenty bases were of bronze, but the hooks of the pillars and their fillets were of silver. And for the north side, there were hangings of a hundred cubits. There are twenty pillars, there are twenty bases of bronze, but the hooks of the pillars and their fillets were of silver. And for the west side, there were hangings of fifty cubits. There are ten pillars, and there are ten bases. And the hooks of the pillars and their fillets were of silver. And for the front, to the east, fifty cubits. The hangings for one side of the gate were fifteen cubits, with their three pillars and three bases. And so for on the other side, on both sides of the gate of the court were hangings of fifteen cubits, with their three pillars and their three bases. All the hangings around the court were of fine twined linen, and the bases of the pillars were of bronze. But the hooks of the pillars and their fillets were of silver. The overlaying of their capitals was also of silver, and all the pillars of the court were filleted with silver, and the screen for the gate and of the court was embroidered with needlework in blue and purple and scarlet yarns and fine twine linen. It was twenty cubits long and five cubits high in its breadth, corresponding to the hangings of the court. Their pillars were of four in number. Their four bases were of bronze, their hooks of silver, and the overlaying of their capitals and their fillets of silver, and all the pegs for the tabernacle and for the court, all around were of bronze. Blessed art thou, Adonai Elohini, King of the universe, who gave us the Torah of truth and set everlasting life in our midst. Blessed art thou, Adonai, gave her the Torah, Bukata Adonai Elohini, Malach Halo, Mashanatel, Hello all and welcome to tonight's tour portion. Before I get started I'm going to say your customary blessing. Blessed art thou, Adonai Elohim, King of the Universe, who has sanctified us with his commandments, commanded us to engross ourselves with the words of Torah. Please Adonai Elohim, sweeten the words of your Torah in our mouths and in the mouths of all your people Israel. May we and our offspring, the offspring of your people, the house of Israel. May we all together know your name and study your Torah for a sake fulfilling your desire. Blessed are you, Adonai, who teaches Torah to his people Israel. Blessed are you, Adonai Elohim, King of the Universe, who chose us from all the nations and gave us the Torah. Blessed are you, Adonai, giver of the Torah. May Adonai bless you and keep watch over you. May Adonai make his presence and lighten you. May be kind to you. May Adonai bestow favor on you and grant you peace. We have two reads today. 1 King 7.13 in two kings, but I don't remember that one. Uh, here's the first one. And King Solomon sent and brought Hiram from Tyre. And he was the son of a widow in the tribe of Naphtali. And his father was a man of Tyre and worked in bronze. And he was full of wisdom, understanding, and skill for making any work in bronze. He came to King Solomon and did all his work. He cast two pillars of bronze. Eighteen cubits was the height of one pillar. And a line of twelve cubits measured its circumference. It was hollow, and its thickness was four fingers. The second pillar was the same. He also made two capitals of cast bronze and set <coughs> excuse me, on the top of the pillars. The height of the one capital was five cubits, and the height of the other capital was five cubits. There were lattices of checker work with reefs of chain work. For the capitals on top of the pillars, a lattice. For the one capital and a lattice for the other capital. Likewise, he made pomegranates in two rows around the one lattice work to cover up the capital that was on top of the pillar, and he did the same for the other capital. Now, the capitals that were on top of the pillars in the vestibule were of lily work, four cubits. The capitals were on top of two pillars and also above the rounded projection, which was beside the lattice work. 
There were 200 pomegranates in two rows all around. And so the other capital. He set up the pillars in the vestibule of the temple. He set up a pillar on the south and called its name Jacking. And he set up the pillar on the north and called its name Boaz. And on the tops of the pillars was lily work. Thus the work of the pillars was finished. Then he made a sea of cast metal, it was round, ten cubits from brim to brim, and five cubits high, and a line of thirty cubits measured its circumference, under its brim were gourds, for ten cubits, compassing the sea all around. The gourds were in two rows, cast with it when it was cast. It stood on twelve oxen, three facing north, three facing west, three facing south, and three facing east. The sea was set on them, and all their rear parts were inward. Its thickness was a hand's breadth, and its brim was made of a brim of a cup, like a flower of a lily. It held two thousand baths. He also made the ten stands of bronze. Each stand was four cubits long, four cubits wide, and three cubits high. This was the construction of the stands that they had panels, and the panels were set in frames, and on the panels that were set on the frames were lions, oxen, cherubim. On the frames, <clears throat> both above and below the lions and oxen, there were wreaths of love, a beveled work. Moreover, each stand had four bronze wheels and axles of bronze, and at the four corners were supports for a basin. The supports were cast with wreaths on the side of each. Its opening was within a crown that projected upward one cubit. Its opening was round as a pedestal is made, a cubit and a half deep. At its opening there were carvin carvings, and its panels were square, not round. And the four wheels were underneath the panels. The axles of the wheels were of one piece with the stands, and the height of a wheel was a cubit and a half. The wheels were made like a chariot wheel. Their axles, their rims, their spokes, and their hubs were all cast. There were four supports at the four corners of each stand. The supports were of one piece with the stands, and on the top of the stand there was a round band, half a cubit high, and on the top of the stand it stays. And its panels were of one piece with it, and on the surface of it stays, and on its panels he carved cherubim, lions, and palm trees according to the space of each with wreaths all around after this manner he made the ten stands all of them were cast alike of the same measure in the same form he made ten basins of bronze each basin held forty baths each basin measured four cubits and there were a basin for each of the ten stands he set the stands five on the south side of the house and five on the north side of the house and he set the sea at the, at the southeast corner of the house. Hiram also made the pots, the shovels, and the basins. So Hiram finished all the work that he did for King Solomon on that house of Yahweh. The two pillars, the two bowls of the capitals were on top of the pillars, and the two lattice works to cover the two bowls of the capitals that were on top of the pillars. And the 400 pomegranates for the two lattice works, two rows of pomegranates for each lattice work to cover the two bowls of the capitals that were on top of the pillars, the ten stands and the ten basins on the stands, and the one sea and the twelve oxen underneath the sea. Now the pots, the shovels, the basins, and all these vessels in the house of Yahweh which Hiram made for King Solomon were of burnished bronze, and the plain of the Jordan the king cast them, and the clay between Sukkoth and Zerathen. And Solomon left the vessels unweighed because there, there were so many of them. The weight of the bronze was not ascertained. So Solomon made all the vessels that were in the house of Yahweh, the golden altar and the golden table for the bread of the presence, the lampstand of pure gold, five on the south side and five on the north, before the inner sanctuary, the flowers, the lamps, and the tongs of gold the cups, snuffers, basins, dishes, and incense, and fire pans of pure gold, and the sockets of gold for the doors of the innermost part of the house, the most holy place, and for the doors 
of the nave of the temple. Thus all the work that King Solomon did on the house of Yahweh was finished, and Solomon brought all the things that David his father had dedicated, the silver, the gold, and the vessels, and stored them in the treasuries of the house of Yahweh. 2 Kings 11, 17 through 12, 16 And Jehoiada made a covenant between Yahweh and the king and the people, that they should be Yahweh's people. And also between the king and the people, then all the people of the land went to the house of Baal and tore down his altars and his images they broke in pieces. And they killed Matan, the priest of Baal, before the altars. And the priest posted watchmen over the house of Yahweh. And he took the captains, the Kurites, and the guards, and all the people of the land. And they brought the king down from the house of Yahweh, marching through the gate of the guards to the king's house. And he took his seat at the throne of the kings, so all the people of the land rejoiced. And the city was quiet after Athaliah had been put to death with the sword at the king's house. Jehosh was seven years old when he began to reign. In the seventh year of Jeho, Jehosh began to reign. And he reigned forty years in Jerusalem. His mother's name was Zebiah and Beersheba. And Jehosh did what was right in the eyes of the Lord all his days, because Jehoiada the priest instructed him. Nevertheless, the high priests, sorry, the high places were not taken away. The people continued to sacrifice and make offerings on the high place. Jehash said to the priests, All the money and the holy things that is brought into the house of the Lord, the money for which each man is assessed, the money from the assessment of persons, that the money that a man's heart prompts him to bring into the house of the Lord, let the priest take each from his donor, and let them repair the house wherever any need of repairs is discovered. But by the twenty-third year of King Jehash, the priest had made no repairs on the house. Therefore King Jehash summoned Jehoiada the priest and all the other priests and said to them, Why are you not repairing the house? Now therefore take no more money from your donors. But I handed over for the repair of the house, the priests agreed that they should take no more money from the people, and that they should not repair the house. And Jehoiada the priest took a chest and bored a hole in the lid of it and set it beside the altar on the right side, as one entered the house of the Lord, and the priests who guarded the threshold put in, put in it all the money that was brought into the house of Yahweh, and whenever they saw that there was much money in the chest, the king's secretary and the high priest came up and bagged and counted the money that was found in the house of Yahweh. Then they would give the money that was weighed out into the hands of the workmen who had the oversight of the house of Yahweh, and they paid it out to the carpenters and the builders who worked on the house of Yahweh, and to the masons and the stone cutters as well, as to buy timber and quarried stone for the... To, for making repairs on the house of Yahweh, for any outlay for the repairs of the house. But there were not made for the house of Yahweh basins of silver, snuffer bowls, trumpets, or any other vessels of gold or of silver from the house that was brought into the house of Yahweh, for that was given to the workmen who were repairing the house of Yahweh with it. And they did not ask for an accounting from the men into whose hands they delivered the money to pay out to the workmen, for they dealt honestly. The money was from the guilt offerings, and the money for the sin offerings was not brought into the house of the Lord. It belonged to the priest. Blessed art thou, Don Elohim, King of the universe, who gave us the Torah of truth instead of everlasting life in our midst. Blessed art thou, Don I give her the Torah. Rukata dona elahini malakalo, mash nata, lenu tredi me baishi alone, nata bete kenu, brukata dona natina tra.
Hello all and welcome to tonight's Torah portion. Before I get started, I must say our blessing. Blessed art thou, Adonai Elohini, King of the Universe, who has sanctified us with his commandments, commanded us, and grows ourselves with the words of Torah. Please, Adonai Elohini, sing the words of your Torah in our mouths, and in the mouths of all your people Israel. May we know our offspring, the offspring of your people, the house of Israel. May we all together know your name and study your Torah, for the sake of fulfilling your desire. Blessed are you, Adonai, who teaches Torah to his people Israel. Blessed are you, Adonai Elohini, King of the Universe, who chose us from all the nations and gave us the Torah. Blessed are you, Adonai, giver of the Torah. May Adonai bless you and keep watch over you. May Adonai make his presence to unite you. May he be kind to you. May Adonai bestow favor on you and grant you peace. Today's read is Ezekiel 45, 16 through 46, 18. All the people of the land shall be obliged to give this offering to the prince in Israel. It shall be the prince's duty to furnish the burnt offerings, grain offerings, and drink offerings in, at the feasts, the new moons, and the Sabbaths, all the appointed feasts of the house of Israel, he shall provide the sin offerings, grain offerings, burnt offerings, and peace offerings to make atonement on them on behalf of the house of Israel. Thus says the Lord Elohim, in the first month, on the first day of the month, you shall take a bull from the herd without blemish and, pur and purify and sanctify Purify the sanctuary. The priest shall take some of the blood of the sin offering and put it on the doorposts of the temple, the four corners of the ledge of, of the altar, in the posts of the gate of the inner court. You shall do the same on the seventh day of the month. For anyone who has sinned through error or ignorance, you shall make atonement for the temple. In the first month of the fourteenth day of the month, you shall, you shall celebrate the feast of the Passover, and for seven days unleavened bread shall be eaten. On that day the prince shall provide for himself and all the people of the land a young bull for a sin offering. And on the seventh day of the festival he shall provide as a burnt offering to Yahweh seven young bulls and seven rams without blemish. On each of the seven days and a male goat daily for a sin offering. And he shall provide as a grain offering an ephah for each bull, an ephah for each ram, and a hen of oil to each ephah. In the seventh month, on the fifteenth day of the month, and for the seven days of the feast, he shall make the same provision for sin offerings, burnt offerings, and grain offerings, and for the oil. Thus says the Lord Elohim, the gate of the inner court that faces east shall be shut on the six working days, but on the Sabbath day it shall be opened, and on that on the day of the new moon it shall be opened. The prince shall enter by the vestibule of the gate from outside, and shall take his stand by the, plate, by the post of the gate. The priest shall offer his burnt offering and his peace, his peace offerings, and he shall worship at the threshold of the gate, and then he shall go out. But the gate shall not be shut until evening. The people of the land shall bow at the entrance of the gate, before Yahuwah on the Sabbaths and on the new moons. The burnt offerings that the prince offers to Yahuwah on the seventh day shall be six lambs without blemish and a ram without blemish, and the grain offerings with the ram shall be an ephah, and the grain offerings with the lamb shall be as much as he is able, together with a hen of oil to each ephah. On the day of the new moon he shall offer a bull from the herd without blemish. Mm. And six lambs and a ram, which he shall, which shall be without blemish. As a grain offering, he shall provide an ephah with the bull, and but in, in an ephah with the ram and with the lambs as much as he is able, together with the hen of oil to each ephah. When the prince enters, he shall enter by the vestibule of the gate. He shall go out by the same way. When the people of the land come before Yahweh at the appointed feast, he who enters by the north gate shall worship, to worship shall go out by the south gate, and he who enters by the south gate shall go out by the north gate. No one shall return by the way of the gate by which he entered, but each shall go out straight ahead when they enter. The priest, sorry, the prince shall enter with them, and when they go out, he shall go out. At the feasts and the appointed festivals, the grain offering with a young bull shall be an ephah, with a ram. An ephah, and with the lambs as much as one is able to give, together with the hen of oil to an ephah. When the prince provides a freewill offering, 
either a burnt offering or a peace offering as a free will offering to Yahweh, the gate facing east shall be open for him. And he shall offer his burnt offerings or his peace offerings as he does on the seventh day, Sabbath day. Then he shall go out, and after he has gone out, the gate shall be shut. You shall provide a lamb, a year old without blemish, for a burnt offering to Yahweh daily. Morning by morning you shall provide it. You shall provide a grain offering with it. Morning by morning, one-sixth of an ephah, and one-third of a hen of oil to moisten the flour, as a grain offering to Yahweh. This is a perpetual statute. Thus the lamb and the meat... The meal offering and the oil shall be provided morning by morning for a regular burnt offering. Thus says the Lord Elohim, if the prince makes a gift to any of his sons as an inheritance, it shall belong to his sons. It is their property by inheritance. But if he makes a gift out of his inheritance to one of his servants, it shall be his to the year of liberty. Then it shall revert to the prince. Surely it is his inheritance. It shall belong to his sons. The prince shall not take any of the inheritance of the people, thrusting them out of their property. He shall give his sons the inheritance out of his own property, so that none of my people shall be scattered from his property. Blessed art thou, Adonai Elohim, king of the universe, who gives the Torah of truth and set everlasting life in our midst. Blessed art thou, Adonai, giver of the Torah, Brukata Adonai Elohim, Melach Kalom, Ashna, Natan, Lenu Tredi Met Vaishi, Alom Nata Betakinu Brukata Dona Natin Hatra. Alright, I am trying a new recording software, and it's going to be a little late, so, yeah. Before I get started, I'm going to say a blessing. Blessed art thou, Don Elohini, King of the Universe, who has sanctified us with his commandments, and commanded us to engross ourselves with the words of Torah. Please, Don Elohini, you sing the words of your Torah in our mouths, and in the mouths of all your people, Israel. May we and our offspring, the offspring of your people, the house of Israel. May we all together know your name and study your Torah for sake fulfilling your desire. Blessed are you, Adonai, who teaches Torah to his people, Israel. Blessed are you, Adonai, the king of the universe, who chose us from all the nations and gave us the Torah. Blessed are you, Adonai, giver of the Torah. May Adonai bless you and keep watch over you. May Adonai make his presence to enlighten you. May be kind to you. May Adonai bless so favor on you and grant you peace. Today's read is Mark. 6 14 through 29 and then there's going to be another one after this uh king herod heard of it for yeshua yeshua's name had become known some said john the baptist has been ridden, risen from the dead that is why the miraculous powers are at work in him but others said he is elijah and others said he is a prophet like one of the prophets of old but when herod heard of it he said john whom i beheaded has been raised, for it was Herod who sent and seized him and bound him in prison for the sake of Herodias, his brother Philip's wife, because he had married her. For John had been saying to Herod, It is not lawful for you to have your brother's wife. And Herodias had a grudge against him and wanted to put him to death, but she could not, for Herod feared John, knowing he was a righteous and holy man, and he kept him safe. When he heard of him, he was greatly perplexed, and yet he heard him gladly. But an opportunity came when Herod on his birthday gave a banquet for the nobles and the military commanders and the leading men of Galilee. And when Herodias' daughter came in and danced, she had pleased Herod and his guests. And the king said to the girl, Ask me for whatever you wish, and I'll give it to you. And he vowed to her, Whatever you ask me, I'll give you up to half of my kingdom. And she went out and said to her mother, for what should I ask? And she said, The head of John the Baptist. And she came in immediately with haste to the king and asked, saying, I want you to give me at once the head of John the Baptist on a platter. And the king was exceedingly sorry, but because of his oath and his guests, he did not want to break his vow to her. 
and immediately the king sent an executioner with orders to bring John's head. He went and beheaded him in the prison, and brought his head on a platter and gave it to the girl, and the girl gave it to her mother. When his disciples heard of it, they came and took his body and laid it in a tomb. 2 Corinthians 9.1-15 Now it is superfluous for me to write to you about the ministry for the saints, for I know you your readiness, of which I boast about you the people of Macedonia, saying that Archiae has been ready since last year, and your zeal has stirred up most of them. But I am sending the brothers so that our boasting about you may not prove empty in this matter, so that you may be ready as I said you would be. Otherwise, if some Macedonians can come with me and find out that you are not ready, we would be humiliated to say nothing of you for being so confident. So I thought it necessary to urge the brothers to go on ahead to you and arrange in advance for the gift you have promised, so that it may be ready as a willing gift, not as an exaction. The point is, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. Whoever sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. Each one of us must give as he has decided in his heart, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for Elohim loves a cheerful giver, and Elohim is able to make all grace around you, abound you to you. So that having all sufficiency in all things at all times, you may bound in every good work, as it is written, he has distributed freely and he has given to the poor. His righteousness endures forever. He who supplies seed to the sower and bread for the food will supply and multiply your seed for sowing and increase the harvest of your righteousness. And you will be enriched in every way to be generous in every way. With through us will produce, which through us will produce thanksgiving to Elohim for the ministry of this service is not only supplying the needs of the saints, but also overflowing in many thanksgivings to Elohim. By their approval of the service, they will glorify Elohim because of your submission. That comes from your confession of the gospel of Hamashiach, and the generosity of your contribution for them and for all others. While they long for you and pray for you because of the surpassing grace of Elohim upon you, thanks be to Elohim for his inexpressible gift. Blessed art thou, Donai Lehi, King of the universe, who gave us the Torah and set everlasting life in our midst. Sorry, the Torah of truth and set everlasting life in our midst. Blessed art thou, Donai, giver the Torah, Brukata, Donai Lehi, Malak, Halo, Mashanata, Lunu, Tereti, Met, Vaishi, Elom, Nata, Betak, and you, Brukata, Brukata, Donai, Natin, Ha, Torah. So this is going to be B A space four. So. All right, as we wait for that to save, I don't know what it is doing. What are you doing? Hello all and welcome to tonight's Torah portion. Before I get started, I must say a blessing. Blessed art thou, Donai Lehi, King of the Universe, who has sanctified us with his commandments, commanded us to engross ourselves with the words of Torah. Please, Donai Lehi, treat the words of your Torah in our mouths and in the mouths of all your people Israel. May we and our offspring, the offspring of your people, a house of Israel, may we all t together know your name and study your Torah for the sake of fulfilling your desire. Blessed are you, Donai, who teaches Torah to his people Israel. Blessed are you, Donai Lehi, King of the Universe, who chose us from all the nations and gave us the Torah. Blessed are you, Donai, giver of the Torah. 
May Adonai bless you and keep watch over you. May Adonai make his presence to unite you. May he be kind to you. May Adonai bless favor on you and grant you peace. Our first read is... Hebrews 9, 1 through 14. Now even the first covenant had regulations for worship in an earthly place of holiness. For a tent was prepared, the first section in which were the lamps stand and the table and the bread in the presence. It is called the holy place. Behind the second curtain was a second section called the most holy place, having the golden altar of incense and the ark of the covenant covered on all sides with gold in which the golden urn holding the manna and Aaron's staff was budded staff that budded and the tables of the covenant above it, above it were the cherubim of glory overshadowing the mercy seat of these things we cannot know we cannot now speak in detail sorry these preparations having thus been made, the priests go regularly into the first section performing their ritual duties, but into the second only the high priest goes, and he but once a year, and not without taking blood, which he offers for himself and for the unintentional sins of the people. By this the Holy Spirit indicates that the way into the holy place is not yet open as long as the first section is still standing, which is symbolic for the present age according to the arrangement, gifts, and sacrifices. According to this arrangement, gifts and sacrifices are op offered that cannot perfect the, the conscience of the worshiper, but deal only with the food and drink and various washings, regulations for the body imposed until the time of reformation. <clears throat> but when Hamashiach appeared as the high priest of the good things that have come, then through the greater and more perfect tent, not made with hands, that is, not of his creation, he entered once for all into the holy places, not by means of the blood of goats and calves, but by means of his own blood, thus securing an eternal redemption. For if the blood of goats and bulls in the sprinkling of defiled persons with the ashes of a heifer sanctify for the purification of the flesh, how much more will the blood of Hamashiach, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without blemish to Elohim, purify our conscience from the dead works to serve the living Elohim? Revelation 11, 1 through 13. Then I was given a measuring rod like a staff, and I was told, Rise and measure the temple of Elohim and the altar and those who worship there, but do not measure the court outside the temple. Leave that out, for it is given over to the, <coughs> to the nations. And they will trample the holy city for forty-two months, and I will grant authority to my two witnesses, and they will prophesy for 1,260 days clothed in sackcloth. These are the two olive trees and the two lampstands that stand before the Lord of the earth. And if anyone would harm them, fire pours from their mouths and consumes their foes. If anyone would harm them, this is how he w is doomed to be killed. They have the power to shut the sky, that no rain may fall during the days of their prophesying. And they have the power over the waters to turn them into blood and strike the earth with every kind of plague as often as they desire. And when they have finished their testimony, the beast that rises from the bottomless pit will make war on them and conquer them and kill them. And their dead bodies will lie in the street of the great city that symbolically is called Saddam in Egypt, where their Lord was crucified. For three and a half days, some of the people and tribes and languages and nations will gaze at the dead bodies and refuse to let them be placed in a tomb. And those who dwell on the earth will rejoice over them and make merry and exchange presents, because the two prophets had been, tor had been a torment to those who dwell on the earth. But after the three and a half days, a breath of life from Elohim entered them, and they stood up on their feet, and great fear fell on those who saw them. Then they heard a loud voice from heaven saying to them, Come up here. And they went up to heaven in a cloud, and their enemies watched them. And 
At that hour, there was a great earthquake, and a tenth of the city fell. Th Seven thousand people were killed in the earthquake, and the rest were terrified and gave glory to the Elohim of heaven. My question to you guys is, how is all this related? How does one tie into the other? <laughs> Alright. Blessed art thou, Lord our God, King of the universe, who gave us the Torah of truth and set everlasting life in our midst. Blessed art thou, Adonai, giver the Torah, Brukat Adonai, Lehini Malach Halom, Ashna Natan Lenu Tereimet Baishi Elom Natal Betikin Yu Brukat Adonai Natina Torah.